Hi, everyone. I'm Shreya Krishnan, a product manager at Oracle Cloud, and I work on the code editor service. Hello, everyone. I'm Karthik Hegde. I'm a senior product manager here at Oracle, working on software development kits and command line interface. Welcome to our session on code editing from the OCI console. We're excited to talk to you today about how you can enhance your developer productivity and velocity with the code editor and the interactive CLI. In this session, we'll introduce two new product releases and share how these are game changers in an OCI developer's journey. We'll talk about the OCI code editor and show you some of its powerful capabilities Following this, we'll introduce you to the interactive command line interface and show you a demo of how it greatly simplifies and transforms the way you interact with OCI. Before we begin, let's talk about our motivation to deliver these products to you. Now, as a cloud developer, you're tasked with creating and managing multiple workflows and code deployments across a wide range of Oracle cloud services. This can often involve switching between local and remote development environments and various tools. Now, I'm sure you agree with me on how this hinders your productivity and disrupts your flow from time to time. On the other hand, research shows that it can take up to 23 minutes to regain focus after a disruption to your flow. Now, from speaking with a number of you, we learned that this was a key pain point that we had to address. Our aim, therefore, is to make development on OCI easier by empowering you with the right tools that allow you to accomplish more with less efforts. I'm sure you've noticed that until recently, the OCI console did not offer an in-console code editing experience. Developers had to edit and manage code on their local machines and then manually upload these artifacts to different OCI services. This led to a disjointed experience with the developers had to switch between the console and local developer development environments multiple times to accomplish simple coding tasks. As a result, we launched the OCI code editor in August of 2022. Now the code editor enables you to edit and deploy code for various OCI services directly from the cloud console. So gone are the days of switching between multiple development environments and juggling a number of tools. With this free tool, you can rapidly prototype cloud solutions, explore new services, and accomplish coding tasks straight from the OCI console. You can do all of this without spending any effort on setting up your environment. And all you need to do is launch the code editor with a single click and code away. Now, the code editor is thoughtfully designed to increase your productivity through numerous features, including rich language support, intelligent code editing, session continuity, Git integration, and a lot more. In addition, it integrates seamlessly with OCI services through native plugins that enable end-to-end -end workflows. You can also launch the code editor from the context of OCI services to edit service-specific artifacts. Now let's take a look at what some of these services are. The code editor supports functions, resource manager, data science, and API gateway. And we'll soon offer integration with Dataflow, OCI's managed Spark service. I'll also give you a private preview of this Dataflow plugin during the demo. In addition to this, we'll roll out plugins for more OCI services in due course based on demand. Now, if you're still wondering why I mentioned that the code editor was a game changer, well, we've heard from many of our customers that it has enhanced their developer, developer experience on OCI and allowed their teams to innovate faster. In a sense, the code editor is a force multiplier. It makes development on OCI easier and significantly enhances the overall user experience of building and managing services on OCI. For instance, Deloitte mentioned how the ability to edit service files and configurations directly from the cloud console has helped reduce wait time for deployments and streamline their development and testing cycles. Now, if your organization is yet to take advantage of the code editor, I urge you to try it out. If you'd like to see why, let's take a look at some of its compelling features in a demo. In this demo, I'd like to show you two key workflows. First, the Git workflow, which allows users to version and promote their code, as well as collaborate on projects with their teammates. Following this, I'll show you how the code editor seamlessly integrates with OCI services to enable end-to-end -end code editing workflows. Let's dive right in. Users can launch the code editor with just one single click, and that's as easy as it gets. 
Now that the code editor has loaded, you can see that it dons a familiar interface which makes it easy to get started with right from the beginning. It has a plugin for OCR services including functions, data science and resource manager on the left, a git plugin which I'm going to use in just a bit. You can also search for specific files and lastly you can navigate the file tree. Let's now take a look at the git workflow which is among the most common workflows for any developer. Let's start by cloning a git repository using the command palette on top. I'll enter the URL of the repo that I wish to clone. You can now see that the repository I cloned is in my home directory. Now, let's go ahead and edit this file. This is how simple it is to clone a repository and start coding right away. Another interesting feature I'd like to draw your attention to is the syntax highlighting. The code editor currently supports over a dozen programming languages through intelligent code editing features that make your work as a developer a lot easier. The Git plugin shows the file modifications that we just made. Now let's push these changes back to our remote repository. Let's first stage them. Now we can add a commit message and commit our changes. We can then push our changes back to our remote repository using our username and personal access token. Now, you can see that the changes we just pushed are reflected in our remote Git repository, and this is how easy it is to version and promote code using the code editor's Git plugin. We can then compile and run the code that we just edited using two options, either by using the built-in terminal within the code editor or by launching a new Cloud Shell session from the editor. As you can see here, I'll use the built-in terminal to first compile my code. And now let's run this using the Cloud Shell. Now this feature allows you to test your applications locally and iterate faster. Now that that's done, let's move on to the second part of this demo, the part that I'm most excited to show you. Let's now take a look at how the code editor enables end-to-end -end code editing workflows for OCI services. You no longer have to switch between your local and cloud development environments, which enhances your productivity and allows you to focus on delivering value. As I mentioned earlier, the code editor has plugins for functions, data science, and resource manager. I'm going to show you how you can apply and edit resource manager configurations directly from the cloud console. For those of you who have not heard about Resource Manager, it's an OCI service that allows you to automate the process of provisioning your OCI resources using Terraform. We're currently looking at one of my RMS stacks. In the past, users had only one option to edit config files, which was to make edits locally and manually re-upload these back to the console. With Code Editor, we now have the option to directly edit and apply RMS configs without needing to switch contexts. I'll now edit the simple Terraform config file and run an apply job all from the code editor itself. It doesn't get any simpler than this. Now that we've edited the file, let's see how we can apply this back to our RMS stack. I'm going to hit refresh on my cloud console so that we can view the changes we just made. We can see that the apply job that we just ran is reflected here. And this is just one example of how the code editor enables seamless end-to-end -end code editing workflows for OCI services. For the last part, I remember I promised you a preview of the upcoming Dataflow plugin. This plugin is not generally available yet, but has a lot to look forward to. Dataflow is OCI's fully managed Apache Spark service. Now, the key benefits of this Dataflow plugin include access to curated templates from the code editor that enable you to get started quickly. Second, the ability to test your applications locally in the cloud shell before deploying it to Dataflow. And lastly, seamless integration with the Dataflow service and various data sources, including Metastore and object storage. In this demo, we'll create an ETL Spark application that will read data from Metastore process it, and write it to the Autonomous Data Warehouse. You'll see how the entire workflow is crafted to make your user experience seamless. Let's start by creating our Dataflow application. For this, we'll use one of the sample templates offered by the plugin. 
You can access and modify this code as you'd like. In this case, I'll use it as it is. To test the code locally, I'll right-click on the application and choose Run Locally. Now let's supply the necessary input parameters for our Spark application through this form. We'll also mention the location of our Metastore and run it. Now, the primary benefit of the Dataflow plugin is that it allows you to test your Spark applications locally without the cost or hassle of setting up and configuring your environment. Now that the Spark job has completed, let's understand its output. To view the output, let's navigate to the Run log in the application folder. Here's the job output, and you can see that it first reads our input CSV file from object storage, loads that into Metastore. Following this, it reads data from Metastore and writes it into the Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse. Now that we've tested our application locally, let's create a job artifact that we can deploy to the Dataflow service. Right-click on the application and choose Deploy Artifact, then choose the language. Let's now enter the details of the destination object storage bucket that will house this artifact, including the namespace and bucket name. This will package the artifact and directly upload it to object storage. You can see that the artifact has been uploaded. We can now use this to create our Dataflow application. So the Dataflow plugin greatly simplifies the process of creating and deploying Spark applications on OCI. This brings us to the end of our code editor demo. I'll now hand it off to Karthik to talk to you about the interactive CLI. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm excited to talk to you about Interactive Command Line Interface, a new and easy way of interacting with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Services from your terminal. A few months back, we introduced Interactive Mode to OCI CLI. Interactive Mode was designed to make it easy for you to get started and learn OCI CLI quickly. Now, let's start with how you can use Interactive Mode in OCI CLI. And guess what? It turns out to be very straightforward because interactive mode comes bundled with OCI CLI and it starts using within the OCI CLI by inputting the command OCI space hyphen I. Within the interactive mode, you can run one command at a time. However, as a user, you have the option to enable interactive mode by default so that you can always start in interactive mode while using OCI CLI. Now let's switch gears and talk about key benefits of using interactive mode. First key benefit is command and parameter suggestion. Here, with the help of interactive mode, you can use the menu to view the suggested commands and parameters and also navigate and choose a specific command. You're also provided with parameter values, including Oracle Cloud IDs or OSETs, so that resource lookups becomes easier instead of typing the OSETs. The second benefit is auto-completion. With auto-completion, you can use the menu to filter and automatically complete commands or parameters without having to type the full command on the terminal. The third key benefit is command reference information. With the help of the menu, you can view the information about a command and its parameters. And this view helps you to understand each command and its parameters purpose. The color coding design helps you to distinguish between the required and optional parameters without having to refer to documentation. Now, with that said, I would like to show all these cool features in action with a short demo. So let's get started with interactive CLI demo. For this demo, I'll showcase how intuitive and easy it is to launch a compute instance from interactive CLI. So first and foremost, I have OCI CLI installed on my machine. Now on my terminal, let me enter into interactive mode. To do that, I'll type OCI minus I and hit enter. Now, as you see, we are inside interactive mode. Now every CLI command starts with OCI keyword. But in interactive CLI, OCI keyword is always pre-populated. So in order to launch a compute instance, first I type C and I see a menu that appear. Now in the menu drop down, I see a compute command suggestion. 
So I will use the drop down to select the compute and hit enter. Now I type space and wait for the menu to reappear again. Now in the menu, I can use the drop down again to go and select instance or I can type the first keyword which is I and then filter the instance and choose the instance again from the drop down. Now you can see here there are various parameters compute instance launch command takes. But Interactive CLI makes it easy for you to figure out which are the required parameters and which are the optional parameters through the various color coding mechanisms. So let's go ahead and choose only the required parameters for now. So I'll choose the availability domain and I'll hit space. Now you can see here you don't have to enter the exact string for availability domain, but you can choose the availability domain from the drop down that interactive CLI goes and fetches for your tenancy. So let me choose availability domain one and I hit space and I see that there are only three required parameters left. So I'll choose the next one, which is compartment ID, hit space and I'll Use the drop down to select my compartment. So that way you don't have to remember the exact O set for your compartment ID. So with compartment ID set, let me enter the space and wait. Now I see there are two more required parameters. So I'll choose shape. Now again, I will use the drop down option to choose the shape that I want to launch. So I'll choose VM 2.1. I'll hit space. I have one more required parameter left. I'll choose subnet ID. Again, I will use the drop down menu to choose my specific subnet. In this case, I'll use demo subnet. The interactive CLI auto populates the OSIT for subnet. I hit space. Now I will enter the image ID for my compute instance. So I'll use the drop down, choose image ID and I'll hit space. So now interactive CLI fetches all the different available image ID for my shape. So I'll choose Oracle Linux. So now I have added all the required parameters that I need in order to launch a compute instance. So let me hit enter now and see what happens. As you can see, I get a response that says my compute instance is currently being provisioning. So let me hop onto my console and see what's happening. So I am on my OCI home page. Let me click on instance. Now, as you can see here, the instance has already been created and is up and running for you to use. So that's how easy it was to launch a compute instance from interactive CLI. So that concludes my demo. Thank you for joining us in this session. We hope you are excited to try out the code editor and interactive CLI. For any questions or feedback, please feel to reach out to us via the emails on the screen. We hope you enjoy the rest of the session at Cloudward. Thank you again for tuning in.